just need to show. Well, be confident that God is going to raise you up. He's going to help us soar like an eagle. And we're going to soar. And we're going to conquer all the mountains that we thought would be unconquerable. We will conquer it because God is going to raise us up. I want to continue uh, this series or the, the book of Proverbs and uh, the last message that I spoke about uh, on uh, to be favored or not to be. So I want to start where I, we left off. We left off by uh, reading um, a couple of Bible verses and we asked you whether it's you see favor, it's not favor. And uh, here it is, chapter 29, verse 1. A man who remains stiff-necked after many rebukes will be suddenly be destroyed without remedy. Favored or not favored? Favored. Or not favored? Not favored. You guys are not sure. That's why it's, it's going to be hard to be raised up. You have to be sure about this stuff. You're going to soar like an echo. You've got to be a little bit sure about these answers. I'll give you an easy one. When the righteous thrive, the people rejoice. Favor or not favor? favor. Awesome. When the wicked rule, the people groan. Not favor, not favored. A man who loves wisdom brings joy to his father. That's right. You live like that, you will be able to be raised up and soar like an eagle. Um, by justice, a king gives a country stability. Yes, we just continue to pray that our uh, president will continue to uh, rule our nation with the justice that people will find stability. God will be pleased and will be able to soar and to be raised up. But one who is greedy for bribes tears it down. Favored or not favored? Not favored, of course. Thank you. That's the, pretty much the summary as to where we left off. Uh, the last time uh, we discussed about this chapter 29, I just want to continue uh, with that. And we, remember, we kind of talked about in order for us, why, are we wanna, why do we want to be sore? Why do we want to be raised? Because... After all, we're not there yet, right? We live in this place, and we want to live a blessed life. We want to live a kind of life that we can see that God is walking with us, right? In order to do that, there are two things we talked about. It's got to run to cross. And I'm going to assume that most of us here, we already ran to cross and put everything down on the cross and said to my Savior, my Savior, you are it. So you did that. And if you have not done that, you got to do that. You got to do that, but that's not all. If you read, read, read the Bible, it's not all. Yes, that will give you that that eternal life. You got a right to go to heaven. Yes, it's a free gift. You got all that. But the Bible also says, in order for you us to live a blessed life, in order for us to live a kind of life where we're being raised up each and every day, in order for us to be able to like. Or like eagle, we need to be found favor in God's sight. We need to be found a favor in God's sight. See, all these people that we kind of read about just four verses, let's just say they're all, <clears throat> assuming they're all God-loving people. Yes, they have already went to the cross and they're saved people. But the saved people, we still mess up with our lives. And, and we become our own enemy, not being able to soar, not being able to be raised up. So we need to, in order, so in order for us to be found favored by God, it's real simple. We need to please our God. God needs to be pleased. So each and every day, or before you go to bed, you say, okay, today, what did I do? Oh, okay, did I please God? Ask that question. Favor? But not favored. He needs to like you. What? You may not have heard this before, but God needs to like you. The the thing is that, I think I used this illustration before, you know, you have four or three or four, five or six, seven, ten children. 
And, and you've got good ones, you've got marginal ones, the little guys that are a little help. They're giving you a lot of headaches. And the thing is that we, as a father and mother, we love them all. And we love them equally. No matter how the, ch- the kids think, we love our kid equally, right, parents? Yes, we do. But if, if I ask you to ask, which one do you love me more? And you're going to say, pastor, that's not fair. That's not the right question. Yeah, I got my children. Some of them are really just giving me all the troubles. And then I got one that just, 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 just does everything that I told them, no troubles. But I love them equally. That's what every parent would say. But then if I ask you, which one do you favor? Hmm, now it's a different story. That's a different story. Totally different story. And my message to you is God feels the same way. God feels the same way. And we want to soar and we want to be raised. And the more and more we're found in favor in God's sight, the higher and higher we can go up and higher, higher we can be raised. And that is what our desire is. And most importantly, we need to show God through us. God has already invaded us to give us their salvation. But now we have to show God through us. That's our part. A little girl, when she was much, much younger, was coming home from church and and went to her mother and, and, and said, Mom, I don't get this. Today, pastor's sermon really, really confused me. Can you help me? And the mother says, well, what about? And she says, well, you know, the pastor said that, 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 that God is bigger than us. I mean, God is so big. He says, yeah, God is big. Okay. But the thing is, God, pastor also said that, that God is within us, that God is inside of us. Is that true? The mom says, yeah, of course. God is inside of us. God is within us. And the girl said, if God is bigger than us, if God is inside of us, if God lives in us, would he show through? You get that? Yes. God should show through. If God is bigger than us, God is inside of us, God should show through us. And my testimony is for many, many years. I did not know how to show God through me. Well, I thought I did. I went to every Sunday. I went to church. I did all the good the things that a, a good Christian is supposed to do. But my world was like this. This is my honest way, the way I felt as Christians some years ago. Church was there to serve me because I was giving offerings. Pastor was there to serve me because I was paying part of his salary. God was there to serve me because I was a believer. Family was there to serve me because I work hard for them. Wife was there to serve me because I'm a man. <laughs> now you get it. <laughs> Kids were there to serve me because I'm their dad. That's right. That's right. I still feel that way. <laughs> they don't buy it anymore. <laughs> I did not live a kind of life where God was showing through me. Then, as you know, who have came to our church a couple of times or several times, that just everything changed. Everything changed. Back in 1990, when was it, Dennis? 1991, I believe it was. As I was 
having the issues with my physical ailment with the heart and all that kind of things, having to put in pacemaker, putting a defibrillator, and the survival rate of facing life and death of 25%, and ended up getting heart transplant, and then insurance ran out, and I didn't have any money, and became a beggar. And so that, you know, you heard the story, right? I became a beggar, literal beggar. Not for the food, but for medicine, because I didn't have the money. So I would drive my... Whatever was left at that time, little, my little car, and drive all over New Jersey and Pennsylvania, going after the patient's house who has leftover medicine. I'll just go and collect them every month. And during that period of time, I lost everything. I lost my salary, I lost my bonus, I lost my BMW, my oil rental properties. Uh, and the hospital had enough bonus to give me invoice with a man. Uh, $450,000 because my insurance ran out. That's when I realized that I was not showing God through me. Once I accepted, once I accepted from going from heal my heart to heal me, that helped me to transform uh, the way I look at God. It wasn't all about me, 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 but it was all about what God means to all of us. That is beyond me. It wasn't just inside of me that I need to be able to demonstrate who God is through me. And that's when I begin to use, uh, I'm doing a lot of summary right now, begin to use a verb to, to indicate, to, to, to mention as to what I need to be. I no longer said I want to be a great architect. I want to be able to, uh, but I want to be an architect, but I want to be able to do the things as an architect can do is to help people, to assist the people, to inspire people. And thus, I started a company with a verb to help those who are in need. And that was another way of saying, I want to be able to show God through me. And as I was living it, and I was, and I was faced with a major challenge, that when, when, when there was heart available for me, to, for me to have it, having waited in the hospital for, for five months, and when another patient came and, and she needed the heart, and she needed the heart the same as my heart. I waited five months. She only waited two days. And then when I learned that, that she would die, if she doesn't get a heart transplant within two, three days, I was able to help because I decided, I committed that my life would be about the verb, not about the noun, but the verb. Verb takes an action. It happens. When you do it, it shows through. So I gave that heart to heart, and she loves. And after that, oh my goodness, God just raised me up so much. As a person, as things that I get involved, I can say that I live, I now live a blessed life. There was just outpouring, outpouring of his blessings. And last message to you is that you can do that too. You could be blessed beyond that blessing of salvation. You can be blessed. You could be found favored in God's, God's sight. And you could be raised up and so like an eagle. An amazing thing is that once God favors you, God says, I'll do the rest. The God that started the good work in you, he will carry it to completion. That's being raised up. You see, when, he, when God says, I'll raise you up, doesn't mean that we have to work anymore. We just have to be found favor in God's sight. I'm not talking about salvation. Where do we got that? You know, when things, when going gets tough, God is there to carry us, 
to raise us up. He did that in the wilderness. When Israelites left Egypt, went into the wilderness, they were complaining and they were complaining. He helped to part the sea. He brought manna from the heaven and fed them. And they were thirsty in the desert and complaining again after having experienced all the amazing things. And they were at the desert. Desert equals no waters. They knew that. And start complaining again. And still like, what are we going to drink? And God just strikes the rock in the desert and just gushes out the water for them to drink. And people can still continue to grumble and complain and complain. And God gently remind them. And God is gently, gently reminding us in Exodus 19, 4, I carried you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. I carried you, I raised you and brought you to me. So you could be comforted that you'll find the rest in me. Now, in this particular verse, the important word is not evil. The important word is wings. It says, I carried you on eagles' wings. Eagle wings, which is more important, which has more meaning, which has more insight. It's the wing. And just focus on that and pay attention to that. Let me tell you about eagle before we talk about wings. Eagle has wingspan that's about 5.5 feet to 7.5 feet. 7.5, that's taller than me. I'm I'm not quite six yet, and I like to say six feet, but I'm not. I'm five, eleven and a half. With my shoes, it's a six foot. <laughs> so when I go to hospital, they always ask me, how tall are you? I said, five, eleven and a half. <laughs> With the shoes, six. And that's big bird. The eyesight, they can see about seven times better than us. That's what I was told. The maximum speed is about 75 miles per hour. That's uh, pretty, pretty amazing. Now, when God refers to eagle in the Bible, and God refers to eagle many, many times, God may refer to some kind of a bird, to some kind of animal, but when God talks about ego, the wing is always there in the phrase. God doesn't say soar like ego. We may say, let's soar like eagles. God doesn't say, I carried you on ego. God does not say that. God's focus on the wings of ego. The important thing is the wings. Isaiah 40, verse 30. It's the same thing. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar. What comes first? On wings. Like what? Eagles. What's more important in this phrase? It's the wings of the eagle. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. We will be raised on wings like eagle. We will soar on wings like eagle. When you have, when you come to trouble, a challenging time, and you want us to kind of overcome the challenge that's before us, what do we do? What do we do? You do and I do. What do we do? Well, like chicken. You flop like chicken. Trying to get from here to there. 
I mean, like this. They flop like crazy. It's not graceful. Have you ever seen chicken try to roost or chicken try to fly? That's a, they look awful. And that's exactly what we do. <laughs> and no matter how hard you do it, they can only go about 12 feet. I've watched it from here, and that's about it. And they just, that's all they can go. So you thought, well, I'm not a chicken. I'm a seagull. Seagull is kind of graceful, right? You've seen the seagull over the waters. Seagulls knows how to glide. It's a little smarter than chicken. They, they know how to glide. They know how to glide the wind, take advantage of the wind. The wind that is blowing horizontally. They can only take advantage of the, of the wind that is blowing horizontally in the, at the shores and seas. See, but they cannot soar. Did you know that? Seagulls, as graceful as they look, but they cannot soar. But yet eagle, eagles knows how to soar high in the sky. They can soar right to the sun. But the amazing thing about eagles, and that's why when God speaks in the word, he knows, he's, you know, we, when we prayed, we said, God, you are the creator. You created everything. He knows everything. It's like when I mentioned to you many times ago, you know, when God explains about when, when, when they were trying to build this Bible tower and God destroyed it because what? They tried to make a name for themselves. So anytime and every time we try to make a name for ourselves, God's not going to be pleased. And we were just praying this morning about uh, the, our church sending off us to go and, 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 and impact this some 100,000 people. Let's just make sure it's not about making name for ourselves, but let's make sure it's about God's name that we're going to make an impact. And then in that particular Bible verse, and God says, like, these guys, when they're trying to make a name for themselves, they try to what? They use brick instead of stone. Brick is man-made, and stone is God-made. Well, the same kind of knowledge applies to this, this particular case of eagles. God knows the meaning of the wing, and he wants us to know the real insight, perception behind the power behind the wings of eagle. And that's why when you look at the Bible, every time it talks about eagles, it's always wings. On wings, they we will soar we will, to the sky with on wings of an eagle. Eagles do not soar using their power. They're not like chicken, like doing this trying to get up. They're not like seagulls doing that. This, that they don't. They do not use their power. And that's what God is trying to tell us. You don't have to try very hard. If you're found favoring me, I will raise you up. I will take you up. <clears throat> God uses metaphor all the time. You've got to be able to hear it. Ego, they depend on some other power. They soar by riding the power of air column. You see that picture of air column? It went a little too fast. But air column is created. It's, it's there. Even there, right there, out there. <clears throat> what happens with air columns, when, when the sun comes down and hits the ground in the morning, the ground is wet, it's wet and it's cold, and when the sun comes down, when the temperature of the, the air is equal to about the temperature of ground and the ground temperature rises, then what happens to the heat from the sun? It bounces up. Just like ping pong ball. Just, it goes right up. And then that's air calm. Air rises. And he goes right those things. Not only that, you know about the storms, right? How is a storm created? You have a, this type of whatever <laughs> pressure. And the other pressure, when they clash, and you go, mm, you know, big thing going on, right? Well, the air column does the same thing. So the, the, you have a certain land 
where it's a lot of filled with the grass. It takes a lot more time to soak the heat. And then you have like rocks and you have a, a pebbles and it, 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 it observes heat much faster. And the little sort of horizontal wind that blows and takes the heat to the colder heat, when they clash, then this air comes shoots right up even faster. It's like jet, it's like, like air balloons. It just goes right up. God made eagles to be able to detect that air comes. Look at that, eagles. Does, he, does, does, he, does it ever flap? They don't flap. All they do is go to, they, they know exactly where, where the air column is. Oh, here is this air column. You go right there, and all they have to do is, and it just goes right up. Wouldn't it be like, nice if we can do that? Wouldn't it be nice if we can do that? That there's effortless. We don't have to try. We don't have to do anything. But the key is to be able to know where those air columns are. So why am I telling you this story? Because first, we can soar like an eagle. Because air column to us is what? It's the Holy Spirit. You see, Holy Spirit is everywhere. And we just have to know and go there and right here and then just go like that. And you can rise. The other thing is, how do I go from here to there so you can go up? It's just simple. From here, all you got to do is to be found in his favor. It's going to here. And then once you're found in his favor, he's going to take you up. He's going to raise you up. Just like you. In order to receive his favor, our minds, our ways, our attitude must be pleasing to God. And that is, love our God with all our hearts and souls and mind and strength. And second thing is love our neighbors as ourselves. And if you really think about it, if you do those things, God will show through us. If you don't do those things, God does not show through us. When God is shown through us, God's going to say, hmm, I see me through you. I found favor in my eyesight. And therefore, come over here, I will now lift you up. All you got to do is stretch your arm, believe, believe in faith that you'll be raised and you'll be raised. When I was in that state in the hospital, when I was, was beggar, didn't have any money, and I was facing life and death, when I received encouragement letters, there were my air columns. They came from you. When people came and prayed for me, there were my air columns that helped me to raise myself up. And sometimes they'll send me a little cards saying, get well. And then inside, there was $50, $100. That was, that were my air columns because we were totally broke. That was 21 years ago. We're totally broke. Those were my air columns. Those little things lift me up. When some contractor or small vendors saw me and trying to, trying to do, to, to survive, and they helped me to give me some little tiny jobs. They were my air columns. What they did, what you did, was the behaviors and attitudes and ways in which you helped me to 
have those air columns. What you did was to find favor in God's sight. You see, what you do is uh, the acts that you do that God will find in favor, the receiving per people will become air columns. Yes, we don't have the wings of feather like eagle, but we got something that is much, much more powerful than eagles. We have the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit. God says the Holy Spirit dwells in us. He is with us. He is part of us. He is inside of us. Holy Spirit is big. Holy Spirit is inside of us. And when we ride God's air column, the Holy Spirit can be seen through us. To ride that air column of Holy Spirit, all we got to do is stretch our wings. Yes, God is bigger. God is inside of us. And don't let him trap inside of you. Let God be shown through you. I need to mention as I uh, depart tomorrow morning with uh, uh, people from our church. And I want to go and be able to help them to be raised up, to give courage. And I need your constant prayer. You are the sender. I am and we are the messengers. When I went to this church, Sarang Church, two times ago, the first time I went there, they had this 10,000 people came 4.30 in the morning to pray and pray and to worship. And the pastor was saying, this church for years, we the foundation of this church was prayer. And we set the goal to make sure that we have a 10% of our congregation that is 100,000 congregation, 10% that's 10,000. We will have 10,000 prayer warriors and they have 10,000 prayer warriors praying for dirty in the morning. And when I deliver a message about how God can be now using these people to raise them up, to raise a society, is that we have one additional thing that we must do. That we need to raise 10,000 marketplace missionaries, ambassadors from this church. And every church including our church. God says to go to the ends of the earth. Well, the last time I checked, earth is round, still round. So if you go to the ends of the earth, you're back to the beginning. And I realized something as I was doing this for the last several years, that we as Christians did go, are still going to the ends of the earth. We pretty much went to just every little island in Africa, in the Philippines, in South Asia, Latin America, not pretty much everywhere. But there's one huge continent that we haven't even touched. And the people were saying, what? What planet are you living? We touched every continent, they said. No, he says, the one continent that we haven't even touched. And that continent is our society. It's our workplace. It's our government. It's our education. We have failed as Christians to send missionaries, to send ambassadors to the marketplace. to education. And America is at the point where we can no longer pray in public schools anymore. We're at the position where we can no longer mention the name God in public places. 
Why? Because we have failed to send godly men and women to the marketplace. Europe, they already went down. Are we about to be like them? I think we can change that. And where is our hope going to come from? It's going to come from ego's wings. It's come from the power of the Holy Spirit. And now we need to be able to send godly men and women to marketplace. You see, what we have done for the last 100 years, 20 years ago, for 20 years is that they find somebody, a professional, working in, in, a, in the marketplace and say, you love God? Say, I love God. Well, then it's a simple. Give up the marketplace and go to the seminary and do your thing. And then when you come out and you go to mission, either to be a pastor or become a missionary to third world countries. And that's the only model that we have right now. And we need that new reformation that needs to take place. That you love God in the marketplace, or you're an IT guy, you're an accountant, you're whatever the case may be. We're going to now 